So hello everyone, uh, here is a quick video on an advanced use case that I uh, worked on with Philip early on during one of our expertise meetings uh, that I wanted to share with you because I think it's an interesting one and it could be uh, of use to certain people who will be uh, facing that type of uh, use case and problem with uh, your customers. So the idea here is that uh, the customer wants to actually store uh, the components that will be used in uh, the subcontracting uh, with one or several of their suppliers uh, in a subcontracting location. But the idea is that the same uh, component that is used uh, for a finished product uh, is actually uh, and could actually be sent uh, to different subcontracting locations, meaning to different uh, subcontractors. And he wants to track exactly how many units he has in each, uh, at each uh, subcontractor's place. Uh, so the idea here is that we need to find a way to actually track uh, the components uh, units that are stored in the different subcontractors location. So in order to do so, we need to actually uh, first uh, activate, of course, uh, the, lo the storage locations and the multiple uh, warehouses in the inventory uh, settings. So that's the reason why here on that v13 runbot version i will activate the routes the storage location and the uh, multiple warehouses uh, configuration and i will of course double check whether i shouldn't have uh, subcontracting activated but it's already the case so here uh, subcontracting is already activated and now uh, what I'm going to do first that I'm going to uh, create sub locations in the main uh, subcontracting location that is configured uh, by default uh, by a so that's the first step here it's creating uh, sub locations uh, from the main subcontracting location uh, for each subcontractor that you have so here I create sub one and I'm going to create, of course, uh, sub two, which depends on uh, subcontracting. Uh, and that's the first step. So you need to uh, here configure uh, sub locations of the main subcontracting location. Then the next step, of course, is to uh, configure in the purchase app uh, two vendors, uh, which actually are going to be your uh, subcontractors, uh, subcontractor one here. And you see here uh, that in the sales uh, and purchase, uh, no, I need to switch to debug actually. So I need to switch to debug. Uh, and then we will see that extra option in the sales and purchase tab. You actually have the possibility now uh, with the subcontracting app to define a specific subcontracting location for that, sub, that subcontractor. So here, let's say that my subcontractor one uh, will have as a subcontracting location uh, sub one, and I will add uh, another subcontractor number two that will have a specific uh, subcontracting location sub two. So that's the first configuration that you have uh, to put in place, it's creating the two subcontractors, the two sublocations, and then of course you need to configure uh, the product that you will uh, subcontract to uh, these subcontractors. So you can create a subcontract uh, product, let's say MRI, which is a storable one. You don't need to apply anything uh, specific, I would say, at the level of the inventory, but you definitely need. Uh, to set up a bill of material uh, that will be a bill of material of subcontracting type and that could actually uh, be subcontractor uh, to subcontractor one or uh, subcontractor uh, two. And of course, we will add on top of that uh, a component uh, that we will call component MRI and the configuration of this component uh, will be um, will actually be 
a storable one, of course. Uh, we won't apply at this stage any rule uh, on the subcontracting. We will uh, leave it as a standalone uh, subcontracting uh, product. So we just save it. We save the option here. So we have our subcontracting BOM uh, with the two subcontractors to whom we can buy the product. And we know exactly uh, which components uh, will be used uh, during the production. So when we have done that, I, we can go and do it uh, in a very simple way, meaning that we can actually create a request for quotation, let's say to subcontractor two. And uh, we can, uh, of course, order the subcontract product uh, to the subcontractor two. Uh, so we just confirm the order, uh, which means that, of course, we have the receipt uh, in our stock location, in our main stock location from subcontractor two. But in addition to that, of course, as we are working with subcontracting, we have actually uh, one manufacturing order uh, that has been created for the subcontract product MRI. But more important than that, as you can see here, um, the, sub the subcontracted product plus the components, uh, they are both produced and consumed in the new sublocation that I have created. So I can more easily track here with that notion of sublocation in which uh, sublocation uh, in which uh, subcontractor's location or place I'm going to actually consume and produce uh, the items. So it's not enough, of course, to think that we are going to do the manufacturing order uh, manually and that we are going to pick the components uh, within the sublocations that we just configured. We need, of course, to uh, automatically create an order uh, direct resupply from the customer's uh, main warehouse. So the idea is that when we have a uh, production, a subcontracted production that is started in sub one or sub two. We would like to bring the product from the main uh, warehouse location to sub one or sub two. So we are going to actually uh, use uh, and extend the current resupply subcontractor on order uh, rule by adding two new rules. Um, that will be true for sub one uh, and sub two. Uh, so we need to say that it's going to happen in my company, uh, San Francisco, in the world's your company. We're going to do a pool strategy. And we are going, of course, uh, to say that uh, we are going to trigger a procurement uh, in uh, the main, uh, in the sub-location that we just uh, created. So that's the first uh, rule that we need to configure. And we need to do the same, of course, for sub two. So we are going to select the company, the warehouse. We say that it's from sub two to uh, the virtual uh, prod. And we are going to actually do some pull from, uh, from sub two here uh, to the virtual location uh, production. That's, of course, the first step. So that means that here, by adapting the resupply subcontractor uh, on order, we are actually going to uh, automatically trigger uh, a procurement in the subcontracting locations, and especially in the sublocations of that subcontracting locations, every time uh, we uh, need to produce uh, the subcontracted product, and every time we need actually to consume uh, the component uh, that we have. So that's the first step. We need to adapt resupply subcontractor on orders. And we need, of course, uh, to um, adapt uh, the rule which says resupply subcontractor, meaning that we need to uh, create uh, the routes that will actually uh, resupply uh, the subcontracting location from the main warehouse. So here we are going to uh, configure a route where we are going to send uh, the component from WH stock to sub one. Again, it's going to be a pull rule. We are going to do it with the delivery order. It comes from WH stock, but more importantly, the trigger will be in the sub one uh, location. I will do the same uh, for um, sub two. Uh, again, it's going to be a pull from with a delivery order from the stock location, and I'm going to do it in sub two with trigger another rule. 
uh, and of course we will apply that on the your company models. So with that in mind, that means that uh, we are going to first raise on the component uh, using a similar methodology to the make to order uh, procurement in sub one or sub two. And with that procurement, we have another rule applicable at the level of the warehouse that will actually resupply the product from the main stock location to sub one or sub two. So the last step here, of course, is to make sure that um, for the component that I have applied in my subcontracting uh, BOM, I need to apply the route that I have just created, uh, which is resupply subcontractor on order. And if we now uh, check again the, the flow, we can actually create again a request for quotation to uh, the subcontractor number one, for instance, for the subcontract uh, product MRI. Let's say that I'm going to order uh, nine units here in that situation. I confirm the order. So here, as for the first time, uh, we have, of course, uh, production that is raised uh, for nine units for the subcontract product MRI here uh, from the sublocation one. But additionally to that, uh, we see that here component MRI uh, is waiting another operation. Uh, and that actually I can uh, see uh, by checking the delivery orders here in your company, uh, the ones uh, that will go to uh, subcontracting uh, one which is uh, just here. So as you can see, I automatically raised uh, um, a delivery order from my main stock location for the subcontractor one uh, by actually uh, setting up here uh, nine uh, units onto the delivery order. So what did I do if I summarize actually the different configurations that I made? I first decided to split um, the locations that were used in the subcontracting location into two, sub one and sub two. I've added in the purchase app on the vendors uh, two subcontractors and for each subcontractor I've uh, specified in which subcontractor location we are going to do the production of the subcontract item. I have of course configured a subcontract product which is uh, my finished product uh, for which I have a bill of material that is of type uh, subcontracting and for which I have defined, of course, the two subcontractors with whom I'm working. And on the component itself, uh, I've decided to apply uh, the resupply subcontractor on order rule, which means that every time I have a manufacturing order uh, that is raised in the subcontracting location or here in that situation, the sublocation of that subcontracting location, I will trigger a resupply uh, from uh, the main uh, stock location uh, of the customer. And for that, because I've added new sublocations, I need it, of course, to adapt the two routes that we have, the resupply subcontractor on order by adding two rules on sub one and sub two to trigger the procurement uh, in the subcontracting locations. And also I've adapted the resupply subcontractor location to make sure that um, with that procurement in the sublocations, uh, I actually uh, react and create a move from my main uh, stock locations uh, to supply the products uh, to the new uh, sublocations I created. So uh, I hope it's, uh, it, it helps and it will help uh, some people in uh, the configuration of um, subcontracting and especially uh, making sure that you have a sublocation uh, in the subcontracting location to make sure that you actually know exactly how many units of this product you have sent to that uh, subcontractors. And actually here, of course, with the subcontracting uh, locations that I have uh, created, I can, when I send the products, uh, here I haven't sent them, uh, but when I send the components to one of the uh, subcontracting location, I can actually track in which sublocation I have actually sent the item. So I can track for each subcontractor the current stock of component that they have. So that was the main objective that uh, Philip explained here. 
and um, uh, I think this solution answers uh, the customer need. Thank you.